Hey guys, what's up? We're looking at finding the derivatives partial z partial s and partial z partial t of a function, but we have to use the multivariable chain rule to do that. So the function we want to differentiate is z equals tangent of u over v, but u is a function of s and t and v is a function of s and t. So we want to know how we're going to find these derivatives. Let's just first remind ourselves what the multivariable chain rule says. So first of all, partial z partial s is equal to partial z partial u, so take derivative with respect to the first variable, I'm just going in alphabetical order here, multiply that by the derivative of the intermediate variable u with respect to s, plus partial z partial v, so the derivative of z with respect to the second variable, multiplied by derivative of the second variable with respect to s. So some of these are pretty easy to calculate. So u sub s is pretty easy. That's just 2. Uh, v sub s is 3. u sub t is 3. And v sub t is negative 2. So actually those derivatives are pretty easy to calculate. Let's look at the derivative of z with respect to u and also the derivative of z with respect to v. So z sub u, partial derivative of z with respect to u, is going to equal, first differentiate the tangent function. We get secant squared of u over v. Now differentiate the inside, u over v, with respect to u. We get 1 over v. So this is actually just 1 over v secant squared u over v. So that's the derivative of z with respect to u. Let's look at the derivative of z with respect to v. So again, differentiate this function tangent secant squared of u over v is what we get. And now multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to v. Well, now we've got a constant over v that differentiates to negative the constant, in this case, u over v squared. So this turns out to just be negative u over v squared secant squared times, or secant squared of u over v. So if we plug those in, then we get partial z partial s, so z sub s, is going to be equal to, well the first one here, 1 over v times secant squared of u over v times the derivative of u with respect to s, which is 2, plus negative u over v squared times secant squared u over v times derivative of v with respect to s, and that's a 3. Let's first simplify this expression and then plug in everything that u is and v, what are u and v in terms of s and t. So we simplify the expression, we can pull out a secant squared. So let's pull out a secant squared. So z sub s is going to equal secant squared u over v times 2 over v minus 3u over v squared. So we just pulled that secant square out. Now what can we do? We can add inside these brackets by finding a common denominator. And once we do that, we multiply this term here, top and bottom, by v. We'll get secant squared u over v outside still. And then inside the bracket, we're going to get 2v minus 3u over v squared. Now let's plug in what u and v are. So z sub s is equal to secant squared of, the numerator is u, which is 2s plus 3t. The denominator is 3s minus 2t, because it's v. Now, inside the brackets, we have 2 times 3s minus 2t, 
minus 3 times 2s plus 3t all over 3s minus 2t squared. Now we simplify. We can distribute some terms here. We get a 6s right here, a 6s right here. Those are going to cancel. And this is going to give us a negative 4t and a negative 9t. So we reduce this in the numerator. It's going to be negative 13t. So this is going to reduce to negative 13t over that denominator squared, so 3s minus 2t squared times secant squared of 2s plus 3t over 3s minus 2t. So that is partial z, partial s. Now, partial z, partial t, very, very similar. So let's see what happens. All right, so if we write down partial z, partial t, the only thing that changes are those second terms. So what stays the same is, first of all, partial z, partial u. Now here's what changes. We multiply by partial u, partial t. So that's new. And then partial z, partial v is the same. And then partial v, partial t. So we already know u sub s we know is 2. v sub s was 3. u sub t is 3. And v sub t is negative 2. So we're going to plug those in. And we already know what partial z, partial u, and partial z, partial v are. So we're going to go straight to z sub t. So z sub t is equal to the first term, partial z, partial u, we know is 1 over v times secant squared of u over v. And then we multiply that by u sub t, partial u, partial t, which is 3. Plus, and now partial z, partial v, we already found that to be negative u over v squared times secant squared u over v. Now multiply by partial v, partial t, and that's negative 2. So again, we're going to factor out the secant squared. So factor out secant squared of u over v. And that's going to leave us with 3 over v plus 2u over v squared. We find a common denominator multiplying top and bottom here by v. This is going to be secant squared of u over v times 3v plus 2u over that denominator v squared. So v squared. Now let's plug in what u and v are in terms of s. So this is going to equal secant squared. And then u, we know, is 2s plus 3t over 3s minus 2t. Now multiply that by 3 times v, which is 3s minus 2t, plus 2 times u, which is 2s plus 3t, over this denominator squared, we're going to get 3s minus 2t quantity squared. Now again, we're going to have a distribution here. We multiply, we get 9s plus 4s is going to be 13s, but then negative 6t is going to cancel with positive 6t. All right, so this is going to tell us that z sub t is going to equal secant squared 2s plus 3t over 3s minus 2t times, and now this is going to reduce to 13s over 3s minus 2t quantity squared. And that is our answer, z sub t.